the purpose for that was I wanted to drain the carburetor completely out of fuel uh, with the fuel valve turned off, the fuel line turned off, so it's straight up and down, and I'll show you that later. And also at the same time, warm up the engine. Reason being is, like the title of the video says, we're going to do some maintenance on this Honda now. We're going to do the first five hour maintenance and we might move into some more things and just do some checking out on how, what makes this thing tick, what makes this mower this mower. Uh, so some of that's going to be with the blades, the wheels, the blade, um, the, the transmission belt. Uh, we're going to change the oil. We're going to put oil back in it according to the manual and I got the fuel shut off. We're going to just do a quick little check on this machine. Make sure everything's all right. Adjust the drive cable. Do all the things that we need to do to keep this thing running in tip-top shape. And as a part of my upcoming review, I want to know about the maintenance and I want to be able to share that with you guys. So thanks for joining me. This is Dan, of course, from Dan's Vlogs. And I uh, really appreciate you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing that I want to do is I want to drain all the oil out of this thing. And then I want to make sure that nobody's going to come behind me and fire this machine up without putting oil back in it. I don't want to forget myself. So we're going to locate the spark plug boot and go ahead and disconnect the spark plug um, for two reasons. One is for that reason right there. It won't start for somebody if they just want to just screw around, squeeze the handle and pull it like, oh, let's see what this sounds like. It won't start. And number two, uh, because this doesn't have the blade clutch on it, which means if you turn the blade, you turn the motor. And if you turn the motor and the operator presence switch is accidentally engaged, you could hit that compression stroke and it might be just enough power to come down to fire your machine up and you lose a finger or three. Um, so whenever you're going to work on your machines, man, it's just a good idea to take the spark plug off. And like I said, you might be the best mechanic in the world, but some schmuck might come in behind you. Uh, thinking they're funny and seize up your motor because they didn't realize you were out of oil. According to the manual, the best way to change this oil is to drain it right from the dipstick right here. So here is your dipstick and of course it was full uh, from the manufacturer. You see you got these, or from the dealer I should say, you got these cross mat, uh, marks right here and the oil needs to be in those cross marks um, from half to the top and it was definitely in there and has been but we got uh, my yard my neighbor's yard my yard again and a customer's yard on this machine so we don't quite have five hours but it's close enough we're gonna go ahead and change the oil and all you do is tip the machine over into this pan but that's why I like to um, fire the machine up and warm it up so the spoon on the on the crank and, and uh, on the rod and everything is splashing around in the oil because this doesn't have an oil pump so it's splash lubricated I want that spoon splashing in the sump and I want it kicking up every loose piece of little metal, every little bit of dirt. I want that all kicked up. I want the oil warm so it's nice and thin and it'll flow right out and all that dirt will come right out. So that's the purpose there. Probably easier to do on the floor, um, but for video purposes we'll do it this way but I bet it's easier to do on the floor. Now the oil that it calls for, uh, according to the temperatures that I'm in, is 10W30, which happens to be the recommended oil viscosity uh, for general purpose anyways. Uh, there is no um, stipulation in the manual that says that you can use um, synthetic oil. So I'm going to use exactly what the manufacturer says to use. I hope you guys can understand that. Better safe than sorry. And we're going to drain it all out. Tip it over. Now before you do this, you turn the fuel line off just like I did and I ran the carburetor out of fuel. That was water dripping out because I, I washed it, I hosed it off. Definitely cleaner to do it on the floor and tip it right in, but that's all right. We got video. All 
right, so if that was all we were going to do was just change the oil, we would then go ahead and put the oil back in, brand new oil. 10W30 conventional motor oil. Um, brand doesn't matter, whatever. And uh, it says right in the book, if you follow the book, it tells you it uses 12 to 13 and a half ounces. So you got this quart right here, which is what, 24 ounces? 28 ounces, 30, 32 ounces. So we're going to use, you know, almost half of this, almost. And here's what I was telling you about. You can use 30 weight. Um, 10W30, if your temperatures are normally above 60 to 100 degrees. 5W30, if your temperatures are 20 to about 60 degrees. Uh, but you can use 5W30 all the way through. But that's awfully thin on the 5. Uh, and then you got 30 weight up here. But it says recommended oil for general use is 10W30. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here and, and try to think that I'm smarter than Honda. All right, that's, that's what their techs want you to use. That's what you use, period. That's just the way I am. All right, so we are going to put the dipstick back in, and we're going to move on to inspecting the blades as a part of maintenance. All right, so here's the underside of the Honda, um, of, of the Honda mower. You got two bolts here for the blade that goes on to the assembly here. And you got your transmission belt right back here that you got to look for, you know, check for wear and stuff like that. You got your transmission is down here. Right here. Your axle comes across. There's bearings in here and here. And then there's, it's gear driven in here and that's how it operates. Turns the shaft, which turns, turns the wheels. I guess it turns the shaft, I imagine. I don't know. Yeah, it turns the shaft, which turns the wheels. Gear driven. So it's kind of neat. Uh, but what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take these. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take these blades off, and check this whole assembly out. The dripping that you're seeing is water. Like I said, I hosed off the machine and everything. Uh, we drained the carburetor by running it out of gas, so there's nothing coming out of the carburetor. And we drained the oil a little while ago. So let's size these up real quick. Uh, probably going to be metric, and it might be 15 millimeter. And it might be 14 millimeter. And we have a winner, 14 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and break torque on these. Remember righty tighty lefty loosey. That wasn't too bad. Just a couple good pops. You can put a wrench on here, break torque, hold this with your hand if you need to. You hear that? It, it breaks the torque. Just right there. Always wear gloves when you're dealing with blades, even if they're dull. Trust me on that one. Now, these are probably going to have special washers that are shaped kind of like a cone. If so, pay attention to that because they go back on the way you found them. And we do. They go, it's hard to see on the camera, but they're actually going in right here and out right here. So when you, when you tighten these down, it pressures the washer in and it puts positive torque always on the head to keep it from coming loose. I don't know what they call those, but whatever so this is the four blade system well two blade system I should say four cutting edges so you see how they go together there's a groove in the blade here and there's a bevel here, a bevel and a riser, I guess. And so you really can't mess that up. They're gonna go together like this, and that's that. And so there's your edges, one and two, and then the other side, three and four. So there's, there's how that works. 
I put a quick sharpen on those. I got plenty of videos of sharpening blades. Um, here is the adapter, the blade adapter. All right, this connects directly to your crank of the engine. And then right underneath this, if you can see it, is the belt that operates the transmission. That's what's going to put positive pressure on the transmission. And so as you do your select the thingy, your select whatever it's called, the transmission is going to rotate backwards and it's spring loaded down there. Just like the Troy built and that tightens. You see how that tightens? And so the more that you tighten the transmission this way, the more positive tension the belt is putting on the pulley to turn the transmission. With no thumb on the, you know, applying the, um, the self-propulsion, the, the belt is literally just slipping right here. It's just slipping. This is spinning like it is right now. Like, let's just say it's spinning and the belt's not moving. Now, if you do the butterfly grip up there to put propulsion on, then that would then tighten this up, which would in turn turn the transmission, which turns the shaft, which turns the back wheels. So that's it in a nutshell, exactly like the Troy built. Um, hopefully better. The transmission, I mean, actually coming out, you got seals here, you got bearings here, bearings here where the Troy built didn't have that uh, definitely I mean it's just overall it's just looking like it's it's a little bit um, better constructed in that sense at least now is the transmission the same damn transmission the same part number I don't know maybe I mean I guess I guess we'll figure that out I went three years with my Troy built and I never needed to do the transmission but I changed the belt a couple times um, so what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and I'll sharpen up them blades real quick. We'll get all that back together. And then I'm going to show you guys going through the manual. We're going to go through some maintenance steps, like I said. And we're going to talk about tensioning up the um, self-propulsion to make sure because metal stretches. Metal will never condense, but metal can stretch. So when you have a cable, cables stretch. Bicycle chains stretch. That's why when you buy a brand new bike, you have you set the brakes on the brake handles and you set your chain tension and next thing you know 20 miles down the road the brakes are looser the, 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 they're not grabbing like they used to and the chain might even come off it might take more than 20 minutes it depends how much pressure you're using on the brakes and how much pedal strength you're putting down to really put tension on the chain but the metal will stretch so when you buy a new bike at, at Walmart or whatever um, it's on you to readjust your brakes and your chain. If you buy it at a good retail store, they'll tell you come in after your first 25 miles or your first 50 miles or something like that so we can go over your bike. Um, same thing with this mower. With all mowers, your cables are going to get looser. They're going to stretch. So you need to go back after you use them for a little while. You need to go back and make sure that you got the proper tension in there so you're getting the most efficiency for your efforts. So let me go ahead and sharpen the blades and then I'll be back. All right, let me talk about this blade real quick uh, for some of you people that are new to this um, and you, you hear words like um, three in one, high lift, low lift, no lift. Uh, basically, whenever you buy a push mower, pretty much any brand you get, they're pretty much set up to do all three things. They're, they're, the blades that they're gonna come with, they're not gonna be specifically a high lift blade per se. They're going to be right in the middle of the road for all functions of the machine. They're not going to be the best blade for mulching, but they're going to mulch good. They're not going to be the best lift blades for bagging, but they're going to bag good. Uh, their engineers put a lot of work into making sure that you're getting, you know, the most that you can with what, excuse me, with what you're dealing with. So this right here, this is your main blade right here, okay? Um, the main blade here is here's your lift right here the blade tip all right some people call it a fin some people call it your wing uh, but it's actually called your blade tip and you see it's pretty thick right here there's quite a bit of meat on this as sand wears this down this will become not sharp like a lawnmower blade edge but it's going to be sharp this is going to get sharper noticeably different than here this might be a sixteenth of an inch thick right here right here is a sixteenth of an inch but this might wear down 
and really get down to a 32nd and even a 64th of an inch. When you start having that situation, it's time definitely to replace your blade. All right. Um, if you got a crack going anywhere around here, it's definitely time to replace your blade. And if you can't sharpen it anymore because it's now, instead of this nice angle that you see right here, um, it's more like up and down because you've worn your blade, you've worn the cutting edge so far back, you almost have to cut a new edge. It's definitely time for a new blade. So your tip matters and your cutting edge matters and of course any cracks excessive rust or anything like that hides cracks get rid of it um, just go buy a new blade they're not very expensive blades are 20 bucks I don't know how much it is for the Honda I'm willing to bet this is probably a 30 blade a $30 blade right here I don't know um, but these tips is what creates your wind the more aggressive this tip goes or this fin or whatever you want to call it the more aggressive this goes or the longer that it is the more wind it's going to create the more wind means it's going to be moving the, the clippings out of your deck better. It's going to push the clippings into your bag better. Um, it's it's going to send it out the rear or the side discharge better. Uh, but too much lift and when you're trying to mulch you're going to have so much air that you might end up beating the clippings back into the grass before you have a chance. And, the, and I mean the wind will push it back into the grass before your blade has a chance to circulate the clippings enough time by having nice airflow not excessive airflow. Way too much airflow isn't going to make for good mulching. High lift blades usually don't make for good mulching. Um, now if you look at those blades like gator blades where they're they're slotted here and slotted here, it's kind of like the back of an alligator. Um, that is, that's, that's designed that way to number one help chop because they're, they're sharp edges, they're, kind of, they're twisted and sharp, but it also it's open so it's not overly creating wind you don't want to overly create wind so that's why gator blades usually do a good job mulching because you have an extra mulching surface here and they're not creating a lot of wind high lift let those blades suck if you're trying to side discharge or bag there's not enough lift to throw the clippings into it all right so that's just a little blade 101 right there um, unless you really know what you're doing or if you have a specific reason why you want to change the style of blade that you have, uh, I highly suggest that you stick with the manufacturer's part number and then look for it. I got Troy Built listed below in my descriptions and I'll go ahead and try to find these as well. So anybody that wants to have a Honda can check these, out, check these blades out online and see how much they cost. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's your main blade. Now, contrary to the main blade is going to be your, your secondary set here I don't know what they call this but this is that extra blade that causes extra clippings to get cut or you know causes extra cutting uh, this is a no lift blade there's no lift at all to this blade there's no tip there's no wing there's no nothing uh, so this thing this only purpose of this blade is to add increase the cut that's it that's that's the only purpose of this all right so um, these two go together and you'd be down the road. Now, to, I guess one question that I might have is, can I run this without this? And I, I think the answer is going to be no because of this bevel right here. And I don't, I don't think you can. Yeah, so you, you, you can't safely because this is flat right here. And this flat goes against that flat. And that's how it needs to be. All right, so if you were wondering can you take this off and just run this the answer is absolutely not um, this is well I mean you probably can but this is smaller this is a small surface and it's rounded this is completely flat and it's a larger surface so you have a better you have a better mating surface right here and the, the bolt holes are flush and in comparison the bolt holes are not flush. Well, they might be. No, no. See that? No. You don't. You don't do that. You do not do that. Um, and one other thing, don't forget when you sharpen a blade, you know, look it over and make sure that it's it's balanced pretty well. You know, if it's like, if you do something like this, but something maybe even a little bit smaller though, and it and it's like falling like that, then you got a problem. You got too much taken off on this side, and and not enough sharpened on that side so go ahead and put a little bit more sharpening on this side to, to lighten this up 
because of a blade out of balance is going to cause excessive wear and tear on the crank that I said this is the crank going into the engine on your lower bearings you're going to have a lot of and you're going to have vibration and it's going to fatigue the operator because you're going to have vibration transferring from the engine as well through the handle and you're going to you're going to be fatigued um, for no no reason so a lot of people don't balance blades um, I normally don't I normally don't go to that extreme um, I mean if it does that I'm happy with it that's that's fine I don't have a problem with that and then this here I'm fine with that that's if it was a little bit out of balance it would I mean just the slightest little you see it would it would move down so I mean that's fine some people might go even further than that and like really do um, serious freaking balancing uh, but I'm, I'm okay with what we just did there all right so the blade and the blade go back together like so cutting edge to cutting edge don't don't put it on backwards cutting edge to cutting edge all right there was no spacer so you line up your bolt holes and that's it The book probably gives a torque. 99% of you don't have a torque wrench, and you don't know what a torque wrench is. Um, a torque wrench, you set, I'll show you. I got one over there. I don't ever use it, but I got one. Torque wrenches have to be calibrated professionally, especially if you drop it. Um, or if you use it to if you use a hammer on it, like some people do, um, or if, you know you try using it as a breaker bar or something like that, you screw it all up. Here's a torque wrench, and see it's graduated number, so this goes up to 950 inch pounds. This goes up to a thousand inch pounds. So a thousand inch pounds divided by 12 is your foot pounds. So if something says 150 foot pounds, you would go times 12. And that would be your inch pounds, or you know, and you just loosen this up, twist this to the number you want, and then when you lock it down, you put it on tighten, you put it on tighten, and then you twist it, and then when it gets to that point that is tight, it'll go click, and then then you're tight. We could try it. Let's see if the book gives me a, a number. Okay, it says 36 to 43 foot pounds, so um, that's 480 inch pounds because I did I just even did from 36 to 43 I just did 40 times 12 so 480 so what you do is you don't tighten it with your wrench if you do tighten it with your wrench you tighten it with or with this I mean it well never mind if you're going to use a cotter pin that would be different we're not we're not using cotter pins my bad so we're going to go ahead and tighten this up wait I didn't set it to all right, so we're going to set it to 480. This thing's been sitting underneath my welder for the longest time. So you get to 450. I can see it. All right, 450 right there, and there's a zero and 450 the next one up is 500 so now on this dial here it's graduated there's 10 there's 20 and there's 30 so we need to bring it to the 30 460 470 and there's 30 so that makes it 480 inch pounds all right so then what we do is we tighten it And then, if you listen carefully, hold it down at the bottom. And when you get to 480, this will stop moving and the handle will go click. Did you hear that? Let's do it again. Okay, ready? Oh, not 
yet. Hear that? That's your click. That's your 480 inch pounds. And that is all she wrote. Now I gotta get this thing off. All right. And then always set this back down to zero. Take it, take it back down, get the pressure off of it. There you go. And then, because that thing's so old, I just want to make sure. Yeah, we're good. So that's how you do a torque wrench. Now you can, um, you can pick these torque wrenches up at Home Depot, Lowe's, Harbor Freight, uh, Tractor Supply, I'm sure. Uh, online, you can find torque wrenches everywhere. All right, so this one's a, uh, a 100 to a thousand, right, or 150 to a thousand. I have it set right now at 200. Yeah, it's a 200 to a thousand. So you don't want to go below the 200. So there you go. All right, pretty simple. Did you guys learn something today? So that's how you do the blades. That's how the blades are set up on this machine. And uh, that's how we drain the oil on this machine. So the next thing that I want to go ahead and tear into with you guys, we're going to look at the carburetor real quick, and um, the air cleaner, I mean. And then we're going to get into tensioning the drive belt. All right, those are the things that I need to look at, see how things are going. The air cleaner is right here, pretty basic. It's on the opposite side of your muffler, which is over here. You just got two clips, just push the clips down, open it up, and then there you go. It's kind of like a Fram type filter. Might even be for him. It says Honda. Uh, but that's going to trap all your dirt in there uh, and stuff like that. So you just, you know, you just want to make sure that this is doing all right. It's not clogged up. There's no big issues. It shouldn't be. It's brand new. I mean, we got like three hours probably total use on this machine. But I just wanted to show you how it works. Pretty much just like any other mower. And I said I would show you the fuel shutoff. Here it is right here. It's in the fuel line. So there is a full tank of gas. But as you see, the machine's been up, sideways, it's been all over, and no gas is leaking out. That's because we drained the car by running it at the very beginning. You heard it shut off, and we did that with the fuel valve in the off position. So it drained the car, and it took all that, uh, blocked all that into the tank, and the tank is sealed. So here you have this. There is no maintenance to do on this carburetor uh, this early on or at all that I'm aware of. Um, that's just going to be spot treating if, if something bad happens. So we can go ahead and put this back on. But I just wanted to share that with you and show you guys the air cleaner. This just goes on here, comes up, and clicks. And we're done there. The spark plug was right in the front here. And here's the boot. So that's easy to get to. We don't have to mess with that yet. You don't, you don't replace the spark plug for a while. Let me get the maintenance schedule. The Honda manual comes with this nice nifty little maintenance schedule. All right, it's all breaking down, broken down for you with all the things that you need to be conscious of. It's raining as an operator. Um, before each use, it tells you check the rear shield, check your blades, your blade mounting bolts, none of the shit we do. We might check our engine oil uh, and we put gas in it. Uh, that's about all that we do. But it tells you everything that you're supposed to do. All right, after five hours of use or the first month, if you're just a homeowner, um, go ahead and change the oil. So we went ahead and changed the oil already. And then also five hours, select drive cable adjust. So on page 13, we're going to follow those instructions and we'll do that together. The first 25 hours, clean the air filter, which we just looked at and we did that. And then again, check the drive uh, cable. Now all mowers are going to say this, so don't take this as, wow, if I buy this Honda, this is a really big deal, I'm always going to be tearing into my shit. Um, no, 25 hours of use on a push mower is genuinely uh, two seasons for a homeowner. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if they cut their yard for 30 minutes twice a month, that's an hour. Um, they have nine months out of the year, that's nine hours in a year uh, that they might use their machine. So, you know, now if it takes them longer than 30 minutes, whatever, but you see, you're talking three seasons, um, or it'll say, 
uh, 50 hours of use or every six months so they don't want it sitting for that long um, 100 hours of use or every year so here's all the things that you do all right so select drive they always want you to be paying attention to that select drive and that's because you got a belt that's getting loose and you got the, the metal that's going to stretch initially the cable like I explained so when you have those two things happening you're going to go to select your drive and it's going to say nothing it's going to do nothing it's going to say we're done because it's out of adjustment all right so you have to stay on top of that and that's going to be something quick and easy to do right here um, and that's every every whatever clean the filter like all the time change the engine oil every 50 hours so after we do this initial then we change the engine oil every 50 hours we check the air filter every 50 hours um, we place it at 150 hours or as needed check the grass bag every time blade control whatever 100 hours of use your blade control operation we don't have that on this machine uh, your spark plug tells you when to change your spark plug your spark arrestor which we're going to talk about your select drive cable we talked about that always keep that adjusted which we're going to do um, and then you get into things like after 100 hours of use your flywheel brake pad that's going to stop your engine quicker um, your valve clearance your pinion gears see these are things your rear wheel adjuster bushings um, inspect and grease all right that's back there um, haven't done that yet fuel lines these are things that you're going to do after a while so we're going to get mostly through with our season and we're going to come back and revisit this manual with this mower and we're going to go through some deeper steps um, when it comes to uh, your flywheel brake pad your valve clearance that's going to be done by the dealer I'm not I'm not taking my head off and checking my valve clearance I'm just not doing that I don't care how easy it is I'm not doing it I put this in my name not my business name so I have a three-year warranty on this machine I'm not taking it apart they can so um, what I want to do now like I said I, I want to go ahead and get into um, the spark arrestor on the exhaust I want to show you that and we'll talk about that and there was something else I wanted to do too well we still need to put oil in it oh and I want to take the wheels off and check the bearings in these wheels because some people had some questions about that we're going to adjust adjust the drive cable so we're going to go ahead and start knocking all that out. But first, let's, let's check the spark arrestor. All right, so to get to the spark arrestor, we have three bolts on the exhaust cover that we need to get to. I'm sure they're going to be metric. So let's go ahead and get into that. And they're probably going to be 10 millimeter. Usually bolts like that are 10 millimeter. I'm so confident I'm even going to go ahead and get my extension already my uh, thingy here and bet you guys that that's exactly what it is yep so we got three bolts to take off all right we got it somebody asked me in my comment where I get my gas from I said high fiber foods <laughs> sorry about that okay so now here's our muffler we got now to take these two bolts off here uh, and those are also going to be 10 millimeter I can pretty much guarantee you they're going to be long because they're going to go all the way into the cylinder head see long <laughs> All right, so that answers my question. Uh, this muffler is not equipped with the spark arrestor. This book right here shows you the spark arrestor would go behind a set screw. We don't have anything like that. So one thing, one reason why I wanted to take this apart and show you guys this, and hopefully show you that the spark arrestor was not there, but even one step further, this doesn't even have a spark arrestor spot for it, is I did a video where my BG86 blower was acting up and I took the spark arrestor out and that's exactly what the the dealer told me to do to the people in the shop the maintenance people and they're like they said it straight up when the machines start to run like crap that's the first thing they do is they make sure they got ethanol free gas and they, they take the spark arresters and throw them in the trash that's their words and I got of course bombarded by a bunch of YouTube 
uh, professionals who want to tell me how stupid that is and blah 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 and that you're going to burn down a tree and and you know um, they're not required they're optional I wanted to show you guys that the spark arrestor was not installed to prove to you guys that you don't need a spark arrestor that's just not something that's required you don't need it and when your two cycle machine starts to screw up just take that shit out all that's doing is robbing you of power. If you want to take the time to soak it in gasoline or whatever and brush it with a brush and put it back in, by all means, go right on ahead and do it. I'm not going to tell you you're an idiot for doing it, um, but I sure hear enough of you guys telling me I'm an idiot for taking it out when that's what the dealers say to do. Just saying. So we'll go ahead and put this back together. These are just going to be tight. There's no torque specs for this. And this is something that it says to check after, I believe it said 100 hours. You guys ever have it where you can't, can't get a bolt started because it's like far away and you can't, you can't get your tool in there or whatever? And the bolt keeps trying to fall out and you can't get it started. And it keeps trying to fall out of the socket head. If you put a dab of grease on the socket head and then stick the bolt in there, the grease will hold the bolt on. And it will allow you to actually go upside down, actually and drive that bolt into the hole and then you can hand tighten it. Put a, little, put a little dab of grease right there and then you stick your bolt head right there. Even if you don't have grease, you can use Vaseline, use anything. And then you stick that on and then you can go like this with it and the grease, Vaseline, whatever will hold that in. Alright, I'm going pretty serious into the maintenance here. Let's go ahead and take a wheel off. There is no maintenance schedule for the wheels except for the rear bushing it said uh, but let's take a front wheel off because you guys had a curiosity about it so let's answer those questions probably four no it's probably gonna be 12 millimeter i'm usually good about sizing up yeah look at that this uh, bolt at the bushing <laughs> or not a bushing but it's got the slide shaft and then you got the bearings so I was asked are the bearings sealed or open and if they're open do you have to service them so the answer is the bearings are sealed sealed bearings that's exactly what they look like behind too so no you don't have to and here's the assembly here um, somebody asked me if I needed to grease these assemblies um, I don't think you do the only thing it says is the rear wheel adjuster bushings that's the only thing it says to uh, to grease as far as the wheels are, are concerned so these are sealed she wrote I guess the only thing left to do now is going to be adjusted drive selector all right in order for me to demonstrate or for me to, sh to adjust the cable properly I have to demonstrate how the cable works and the functions of it it is of course the drive assembly it's what propels this thing forward when when the transmission is engaged and everything is properly adjusted you should not be able to pull the machine backwards so if you engage your drive assembly, the machine locks. And you see it's locked, the wheels are locked, it won't go. Alright, so what the manual tells us to do is tighten this cable assembly right here by loosening this jam nut and then turning it one turn at a time until it locks up the wheels just by pulling it backwards without engaging the butterfly. Alright, so once you engage the butterfly, it's locked. So what we're going to do is we're going to manually 
lock it by over tightening the cable. Then it tells us to loosen the cable eight full revolutions, tighten everything down, check to make sure that the mower can roll forward and backwards freely, and if it does, start the engine and ensure that the mower does not try to take off on you. If so, take some tension out um, or take a turn out until you find that sweet spot and that's how you adjust the cable. So we're going to go ahead and do that. What the hell? All right. So I verbally demonstrated what we need to do. I want to go ahead and, and let you go one more time. We'll go over it. And I'm sorry if this is a boring video, but this is the maintenance part of this machine that if you're going to spend $650 on, I think you should understand the steps. And it's not a bad idea to watch a video of somebody who knows mechanics to follow and do exactly what you're going to be doing. So let's do it. Select drive cable adjustment. With the engine off, loosen the jam nut one revolution. All right, this is your jam nut right here. So you hold the barrel nut and you loosen it. One revolution. There's one revolution. With the select drive control released, tighten the adjuster by turning clockwise one revolution by hand and then pull the lawnmower rearward to check resistance. Tighten it. All right, now we go one, one back. Nothing. Two, nothing. Three, four. Seven. Oh yeah, that's hard to move now. Yeah, one more, we'll lock it up. Yeah, that's too hard. All right, repeat when pulling rearward. It will, okay, proceed until the wheels lock when pulling rearward. Eight, so we'll go one more. Yeah, that's pretty locked. I don't know if I can get another one. Yep, there it goes. That's locked. Yeah, they're locked. All right. Next, mark the adjuster and loose the adjuster counterclockwise eight complete revolutions. Okay, so now we go back eight. So here's your hole right here. That'll be our mark. Half. There's one, half, two, eight. Okay, eight complete. Hold the adjuster and tighten the lock nut against the adjuster. Push the lawnmower forward and pull backward and check for little or no resistance. So we tighten this. Hold the barrel nut, which is your adjuster nut, and then here's your jam. Tighten the jam nut. Tighten them to each other. Forward and backwards. Check for little to no resistance. Yeah, that seems like it's all right. Start the engine to ensure the lawnmower does not move forward without pushing the select drive control. Now if I push the select drive control, it locks up. Nice. Nice and quickly. So before we start the engine, we got to put oil in it and we got to put the spark plug boot back on. So let's go ahead and put the oil in it. Remember, 12 to 13 and a half ounces. So right now we have 32. So we're going to get it down to uh, 24, 20. So we're looking to get it to about the 20 ounce mark. That'll be our 12 ounce and then we can check, check it on the dipstick. Right 
right on in. Right, we're at the 20 ounce mark left out of 32 ounces. So we got to 12 and it said 12 to 13 and a half, something like that. 12 to 13 and a half. So we'll go ahead, check the oil level. Okay, it says use 10W30 engine oil or later bring the oil level between the upper and lower limit marks on a dipstick without screwing the dipstick in. Aren't you glad I read that? Without screwing the dipstick in. So I would have been low. So basically it says to just be in the middle of these two. And we are. We're perfectly in the middle. Right there. Don't get much better than that. So we put the spark plug boot on. Hi! Turn our gas on. Give it a second for the gas to fill the carburetor bowl. And then we can go ahead and check the transmission. Let me move some things out of the way. Alright, so we inspected the wheel bearings for sealed or not sealed and they are sealed. We inspected the blades. We sharpened them. I showed you how they work. Uh, I showed you the transmission belt, the blade adapter, and we talked a little bit on how that works, how the belt gets tighter and looser uh, for the transmission, and that operates with the handle up here. Uh, we went through the maintenance schedule and discussed what's coming up, and we did the oil change that was due for its first five hours. Uh, we inspected the muffler for the spark arrestor, and this style does not have it. We do not need a spark arrestor. Um, I located the spark plug and showed you where that is, right in front and I showed you the fuel cutoff valve and we went ahead and we adjusted the transmission tension cable whatever you want to call it the the, the drive cable <laughs> that engages your transmission um, so we went ahead and we adjusted that we changed the oil we put the new oil in do not screw the dipstick in just set the dipstick and it should be between the hash marks and you should be good to go uh, we got the fuel back on, we got the oil back in it, we got the muffler back on, the wheels back on, the tension for the cable for the select drive has been adjusted. We believe it's proper, but now we do the final test to make sure that it works. We want to make sure that when we squeeze the butterfly handle that the, the wheels lock up going backwards, but that released it's free to roll forward and backwards, and then with the engine running, it should not try to drive away on us. So let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so forward, backwards, forwards, backwards. There is a little bit of tension, but that's just the transmission. Now what we're looking for is to make sure it's not, see it locks up, that's locked. And then that's really locked. So we just want to make sure that. So now we want to make sure that we can start it up and it's not going to try to run away on us from the cable being too tight. Fuel's on. Operator presence level engaged. And that's, that's it. That's, that's a success right there. So we've got that all worked out. Now let me talk about something real quick here. This is called a Honda Select Drive. So a lot of people um, want to know how I like the Select Drive, the Butterfly. Um, I think there was also another style that Honda has that I don't think people liked very much. This is really nice. Uh, for one, you have your Select Shift thingy right here. And you see it pulls it out so you get even more pull, which is going to make the transmission belt uh, tighter. Uh, it's going to really make it run hard. All right. I was running it mostly here. And what I like about this is that when you have the operator presence lever in, that fits in a groove, and then this falls in a groove. 
and you could just hold it so effortlessly with your thumb and it just goes one handed and I think you guys might have seen that yesterday's video it was very comfortable um, mowing I think the concern that everybody has is like with the, the Toro um, personal pace and even the, the Troy build, uh, the way the Troy built was is you could go on this side of it and then with like the personal pace all you had to do is push down like so just if you just pull the lever, pull the mower that way, it would push this down, which would activate the mechanism to tighten the belt to take the mower, to get the mower going. So you could turn, go like this, and you'd be on self-propulsion right now by pushing the mower, and it would go and you just fall in behind it and follow. Um, same with the Troy Bills. The Troy Bills was up here, and it was a lever that, it was a, a mechanism right here and so you could turn it and then you can go. Um, I think, I think Alan did one where he didn't like the, uh, the lever on his mower, um, I, but I think his was backwards to this butterfly one. I think he said, if I remember right, and I'm very sorry if I, if I mutilate this, I'm paraphrasing, but he said it was counterintuitive to have the lever have to be pushed backwards when you want the machine to go forwards. So it was like you had to, you had to go like this with a lever to get it to go this way. So it was kind of like you turn and you're ready to go, but you're like, oh, 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 and you gotta, you gotta wait for it to catch up. And I can understand that would suck. I believe, and I'm sorry if I got that wrong, but I believe that that's, that was the case. Um, this one's not like that. So, cause you have this lever right here and you go like this and then boom, you see what I just did with my hand? So I noticed that yesterday, um, yesterday was a lot smoother for me. And I'll show you one more time. You're mowing like this and you want to turn, you can go like that and you don't lose the operator presence lever. It's still engaged, see? Now it's not. And then there's the jog. So you can do that with this butterfly grip. You can fall in right behind it and go. Um, that was a concern for some people, rightfully so. It was a concern for me when I saw the video and I was like, ah, I think I'm going to go with the Toro because uh, I don't like that. I'm a very efficient person. I, I try to mow very efficiently. I know I'm not in the shot. I'm sorry. Um, I try to mow very efficiently and every step counts and I want every step to count. Um, and I don't want to have to take steps when I turn to line myself up and then go. I don't want to do that. That's too homeowner. I don't. I don't have the patience, the time for that. So that's why uh, this is really working out nice. Is you got it. You can, however you can do it. You don't have to push backwards on anything except the operator presence control lever right here. And that's probably on every machine. Um, but if it's that much of a problem, you can get those little Velcro straps from Home Depot and put a little Velcro strap on it. I mean. If it's that much of a problem for you that you want, you know, that that's bothering you, you could put a little Velcro strap on it. Not a big deal. Um, all right. So that's it, guys. That's going to wrap this up for today. And we did is pretty pretty deep maintenance on this thing. Um, as far as the book is concerned, we're ready to go. We're ready to have a pretty good season. One thing I did not show you guys was the initial setup, and I apologize, but. These have a quick handle, quick release handle. So you turn this and that just locked out. And that just locked out. And now you can adjust your height. See you have all these lot levers here. So we were all the way all the way up. I'm 5'8 and I ran it all the way up. Somebody shorter can lock it there or can lock it here. And also, you hit those two little quick releases, and then it sits. And voila, you could put your mower to bed. You don't need anything. And then you can lock that, lock that. And it just locked in place. Pretty cool. So I think that's a feature 
other machines, some other machines might have. Uh, that's pretty neat if you've got some tight space and you're trying to store your machine somewhere. That's pretty cool. So that's it. Alright, so that's our maintenance uh, schedule for the Honda. <sighs> Whatever the hell this thing. Oh yeah, the Honda HRX217. I get so confused with the numbers. Uh, so I hope I helped you guys out and um, maybe pointed you guys in the right direction whether you want to purchase this thing or not. I don't know what the right answer is for you guys yet. Review video will be coming soon. Thank you.